Hallelujah. Prophetically, the month has been declared for us. Godliness is profitable unto all things. Don't be deceived. The blessing of God is not tied to a particular location. It's not tied to a particular profession or career, sir. There are many chartered accountants whose destiny has scattered. And there are many who read jumpology that are blessing the trail. Linking other people to go forward in the journey of life, sir. So it's not about your chosen career, especially if you're a child of God. It's not about your profession. Is somebody hearing me now? There are people who never saw the four wall of this university, and yet today they are employing first class students. Am I talking? No, you are not responding to me. You know, we have been deceived that the, kind, the type of course you study matters a lot. It what? Matters a lot. That when you are able to study, get masters abroad, go for PhD in engineering or in accounting or in finance or in fintech or you now go to coding or you go to artificial intelligence. Meanwhile, physically, you are not intelligent. <laughs> God, Sabah, Mr. Boedepo said, come for this business school, and I'm going to teach you what you never had in Harvard. And the man came. What would this man teach us that I have not had in Harvard? And by the time God's servant broke down the teaching to him, he discovered that it's not about Avad, sir. It's not about what? Avad. Yes, of course. If you have chosen a particular part line, then you need to improve on a daily basis. If you have not gotten a degree, you get your degree. If you have not gotten your master, you can go ahead. That is your career. But that alone does not guarantee success and prosperity because the race is not unto the swift neither the battle unto the strong favor is not unto the man of skill but time and chance happen to all of them that is time and opportunity when you seize an opportunity at a particular time that God has already orchestrated, you didn't allow that time to pass you by, then you become a high flyer. That's what we're trying to say here, sir. Understanding pathways to sanctification. The paths that you follow determines what follows you. Blessed is the man that follow not that uh, blessed is the man that what? Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standed in the ways of sinner, nor seated in the seat of his of discomfort. But his delight is in the law of his God. Inside this law he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not what? Wither. And whatsoever it doeth. What is the definition of whatsoever? Anything. If he's selling ice water, he will make it. But we are, we are so many in the body of Christ. But quite a number of all, we have believed, we have been made to believe that if you cannot beat them, join them. So many are now crooked. You can hardly separate between the world and the church. Because we do things the same way. And we are expecting to get 
a better result. You can't continue to do the same thing the same way and expect to get a better result except you are a madman. Because that's the definition that Albert Einstein gave to a madman. He said, a mad person is not the one that is naked on the street. It's simply the one who is doing the same thing the same old way and expecting a better result. That's a madman. That's a madman. That's a madman. That's a madman. But God is faithful. He's going to link you up. Yes. You didn't hear that. I said God is going to link you up. I said God is going to link you up. And your story will change. Understanding pathways to sanctification, part two. And we read some verses of the scripture in the first service, Genesis chapter 45, and verse 5 beginning. Genesis 45, now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Now, most often than not, the reason that is keeping many people on the same spot is because they are in today, believing in their yesterday. What they did yesterday, the mistake, the errors they made, the things that they would have done that they did not do, is tormenting them. The devil is using it to torment their mind. They are right in today, physically, but in their mental system, they are living in their yesterday, and Joseph had to correct that one. You want to go forward? He said, don't let it grieve your heart. You need to forgive yourself. Is somebody hearing me now? Do not be angry with yourself. The mistake has already been made. Don't kill yourself because of your shortcomings of yesterday, sir. Tomorrow is going to be better than today. But there is not no day that is actually called tomorrow. It is today. Your tomorrow begins from today. What you do with your today determines the future that you are talking about, sir. You can look ahead into the future, but you must begin the future today. Is somebody hearing me now? Ah, but many people don't do anything about their today. They are busy hoping about tomorrow. They don't know that our God is a God of the now, not the God of tomorrow. Are you hearing me now? Yes, of course. If you look at the way God put it, I'm Alpha and the Omega. I'm He. That it didn't begin with worse. It didn't begin with worse, and that's the mistake. Me too, I made that mistake a lot. I would say it was it's the same yesterday. Yes, of course, the same yesterday, today, and forever. But when Jesus appeared to John on the island of Patmos, all he said, "I'm Alpha and the Omega." Who is? Who was? And who we? Did you see that? So, Jesus, how, who, who can control the English of Jesus? Who can correct him? He knows what he's saying, sir. He is the author of language. He is. But we have shifted Jesus to either was or to come. He is in the now. And that's why the Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What? 11, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Praise the living Jesus Christ. So Joseph, trying to tell them, be not angry with yourself. I know you sold me to this place out of your wickedness. But... I'm glad to let you know that you are not the one that actually sold me. God only used you as a vehicle 
to bring me to this place in order for him to make a show of what he has ordained for me right from the foundation of the world. So you don't need to blame yourself. Don't die because of what you did wrong. Jesus paid the price for you. He sent me here ahead of you to preserve a posterity. Look at it now. For these two years, had the farming been in the land, I know the farming has been building up, but uh, we have not gotten to the real farming. No, we have not gotten there. It's not a cause. I'm not a prophet of doom. You see, sometimes there is what they call the negative prophetic verdict. There is nothing anybody can do about it, but there is everything you can do to escape from the consequences of the negative prophetic verdict. One of such that when men are saying that it's a casting down, what, is, what are you going to be saying? What are you going to be saying? There is a lifting up for you. So things are not bad for you because the general situation in the country is bad. Essentially, it is bad because you don't have an understanding of how to get your own blessing even in the midst of things that are not really working. Am I talking to somebody? In the wilds there shall neither be hearing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your life by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he had made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye therefore, go up to my father. Say unto him, Thus said thy son Joseph, God that made me law of all Egypt, come down unto me, tarry not, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy heart, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish you. For yet there are five years of famine. Lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. This is Joseph speaking here. And you know, many will not be able to have a major breakthrough because of what their husband did to them 10 years ago. Because of what their wife did to them over 20 years ago. Because of their father refused. The father preferred male children above female children. He didn't send them to school. So, he, he was, he, they were not going to be ready to let go. And as long as you are not ready to let go, you can't arrive a future that God has already prepared, sir. Am I talking to somebody? Now, if there is anything that helped Joseph early, it's not in board. Underst he understood perfectly the plan of God for bringing him out of his father's house and taking him to another kingdom where he knew nobody, where no voice can be able to speak on his behalf. Is somebody hearing me now? And you know, when we're talking about being born again, it is essentially as described in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Christ as what? He has delivered us from the kingdom of the power of where? Darkness. And has translated us into where? The kingdom of his dear son. So, Joseph, where he was unnecessarily being over pampered, he was delivered from that place and was taken to another kingdom altogether where there is no relative, where there is no body that can speak on his behalf. In the midst of all that, God was still able to take him to a greater high, sir. Now hear me, you do not need the vote of any man to become what God has ordained for you to be. Only one vote that you need is your own vote. But most often than not, through sin, you are voting against what God has ordained for you. Only one vote. And that vote that is relevant, majorly, that will make God to attend to your situation, in a more partial way is that your vote 
your own vote. Voting for godliness. Voting for righteousness. Do you know that any time you make up your mind that you are not going to do certain things again, that is the time that you begin to see temptation in that area. Oh, I can't forget so many years ago, before I got, my, before I got saved, I have some ladies that I was trying to, as an unbeliever, trying to chase here and there. All of them said no because I do not have the beauty, the handsomeness, the money, the pocket is so empty, dry, lean, to fund what I was trying to pursue in their life. So all of them turned back. Now this time and I gave my life to Christ, one after the other. Not because I now have money. I don't have money. I've not gotten a job. One after the other, they started coming back to say, what you told me that time, I'm not interested. Can you see the way the devil behaves? Suddenly, they are peep into the future. That now that this person has escaped from the power of darkness and has been launched into the kingdom of his dear son, is going to become somebody tomorrow. Let's look for a way to bring him down. I don't know who you are. Maybe that's your case. Just know that something unusual is waiting for you. And the devil wants you to vote against your own future by your own self, by dancing to wars. <laughs> is somebody following me? Ignorance of God's plan and purpose for our life, for saving us, for getting us redeemed. It's the reason why many people in the body of Christ are comfortable with sin and all kinds of disobedience. I wish you knew why God allowed you to be the first to be saved in your family. Why God allowed you to be the first to be saved in your li line. You are among those that were saved in your line. How I wish you knew that glorious destinies of millions, billions of souls are tied to your line, sir. That if you make it, they won't struggle to make it. Do you know why you are still struggling? Why you struggle at this level of your life, your age, and all the life? It's because the people that your own destiny were tied to, they were not sensitive enough to pick it. So they live their life to worship idol. They go to church, but they still have one Baba somewhere. Am I talking? Yes. And that is why all effort to break loose because those people did not make it on time. And now the devil wants you also to, to lay a foundation of delay for those that are tied to your own loins. Won't you be smart enough? Won't you wake up? How long are you going to continue in your iniquity? What are you gaining from immorality? What are you gaining from fornication, adultery? What are you gaining from lying? And you even have a wife. Does your wife, does the other ladies outside, do they have four breasts? Why are you laughing? And maybe it's the reason. Do they have two vagina? I must be wrong with you. Eh? It's only one. The only thing that is different is the face. It's just your stupidity. The money you are wasting on those who up guests outside over there, those that have been sent from the pit of hell to destroy your marriage so that the future generation of your being, of your born generation will not have a way to the top most of The money you are spending on there, if you spend a quarter of it on your wife, sir, you will see how your wife will glow. You will see it. You can't pay your school, children's school fees and you are paying the school fees of a concubine. Don't you see that your medulla of Blangata, your mental system has been tampered with, they have torn it, twisted it. You now see that you are stupid. Yeah? You have not paid your house rent, you are paying the house rent of a student. One useless girl that will not marry you. By the time she finishes her school, that's the last time you ever see her. Don't you see how stupid you are with your big head?
what, what is making you to laugh? Is it a laughing matter? Now your own case is yet to be addressed. You still smoke. You still drink. You may not be carrying girl, but you still waste money on useless friends. Serve them round. And uh, you are calling yourself uh, the happening guy. Don't you know that? Don't let me use that language. Well, what we teach some people is coming. It has not come. Because a time, maybe you still have money to buy fuel in your car that you are making younger. A time will come that you won't have money to buy fuel. And that guy is so used to the car that he will never follow you on bike. That is the time you will know the long throat that is in that girl. That is the time you will know that the girl and his and her virtual friend with a long beak. <laughs> Joseph said, you thought you are the one that did this. No, my God did it. And what was, what made Joseph to suddenly lay a slave, a prisoner, somebody that should not have any hope in this world? What now made him to become a prime minister without going to school? You are not the first person to be tempted. You are not going to be the last person to be tempted. And like I said, it was on Wednesday that temptation in itself is not sin. It is falling into temptation that is called what? Sin. Everybody is being tempted on a daily basis. A man of God, a young man of God went to me with Kenneth E. again, and of his blessed memory that sir, I want you to pray for me. And the prayer I need is that I will not be tempted. And he knelt down. I said, do you want me to really pray for you that you will not be tempted? He said, yes, sir. He said, the only prayer I will pray for you is for you to die. In the name of Jesus, he dodged the something. He removed his head. Because as long as you are in this flesh, sir, you will be tempted. And that is why coming to church makes you to build strength on a daily basis against the temptation of life. We are living in a day now that people ration the time they come to church. Not because of anything, but because of the cost of living. What are they saying? I will join online. And they will never join. Is somebody hearing me now? A nobody became somebody by saying no to sin. Genesis 39 and verse 9. Look at it. Look at the foundation. Where Joseph got it right he said there is none greater in this house than i neither had he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against what some today will say opportunity not be me, they, it's not me that is running after. Ah, there must be something that God is trying to do. And the devil will tell you, do it. You can always repent. May it not be the last chance that you have, sir, to carry HIV. May it not be the last chance that you have to be like Bashasa of, uh, of Equatorial Guinea. Mm hmm. Can you see a global disgrace? How do you want the wife of that young man to feel today now? How do you want her ch his children to feel? How do you want it? You see, the devil is so crafty. He will not allow you to be caught when you are small. Because when you fall, nobody will know about you. He will allow you to, to go, to climb, to climb, to a level that is so high that the whole world will be seeing you. And when anything happens, Social media will just pick it once and then it's a global disgrace. It's a global disgrace.
cause of ungodliness. In the first service, we look at two of them. Open the doors to sickness and disease. Number two, it blocks access to supernatural breakthrough. And number three that we are looking at in this service, it blocks access to eternity with Christ. Nothing compares with eternity with Christ. Sir. No matter the gain you make in this world, if you miss eternity with Christ, sir, you have missed all. You are of all men the most miserable. That's why the Bible said, if only in this world, we have hope. He said, we'll be of the most men, the most miserable. You'll be miserable. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9, he said, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicator, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Do you know abuser of themselves with mankind? When you see Kamala Harris, ask her. I won't be the one to define. When you see Obama, ask. Abusers of mankind with mankind. When you see Kamala Harris, when you see Hillary Clinton, when you see all these globalists, all this new world order, ask them. They will tell you. Somebody that will have become the president of the United States of America and break record to be the first female president, lost it. They just dug into her past when she was attorney general in California, how she was conducting marriage for same sex. And then when the Muslim, that we even thought they would not vote for Trump because of his ideology against them, all of them changed. And you know, Muslims hate that thing with all passion. All this LGBT. Now when you begin to see a man putting earring, something is wrong somewhere, sir. When you begin to see a man that was not born dada, carrying deadlocks. When you begin to see a man comfortable, going to the saloon and they were oh no may your life not end like bobby risky yeah. <laughs> oh my good god jesus christ of nazareth he said no thieves no covetous no drunkards no revilers, no extortioners. You know extortioners? You are being paid for your assignment and you want to collect money for doing your legitimate duty on the road. They bring case to you in your police station and you are asking for people to pay, uh, what is it called, bail. Because Nigerians are not enlightened. You must pay or bail. That's extortioners. Or God, what do you carry? And if you are not ready to do something, they pack you. Pack. <laughs> well, ask my secretary, he will tell you. Two times he has seen me display spiritual. He didn't know that it's his pastor that is talking. I said, shoot! Shoot! Is your head correct? Shoot! Leria sukatala brali anga do skedele. Lelu skedele brali anga sisia. The other time again, we're coming. And then, okay, we're going to Omuano from Egbe. And then this police just said, uh, just stood on the way. And my secretary now told him, how oh God, why are you standing? You are not even afraid of your life. That if I miss the break, what do you think will happen to you? He said, no, don't talk. Then the other person that is not part of the thing took it up and started vibrating. Pa, pa, pa. I said, ah, is it more than parking? 
What can you do? How much is your salary? <laughs> we are once on the street, sir. And don't dare me. Even you that you are looking at me. Because I can bring you to this altar and give you, no matter managing director that you are, give you 12 lashes of cane. Uh, okay. Tempt me. They will not inherit the kingdom of God, and such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Please wake up to, to the reality, sir. <laughs> the guy, the policeman begged eventually. When he, I now just carry my phone. Hello? <laughs> just ordinary hello. We have been on the streets. God brought us into the kingdom at such a time as this to deal with the disobedience, beginning from the house of God first. Heaven is sweet. Oh. Tell your neighbor, don't miss it. If you miss heaven, you can't miss hell. Why are you afraid to tell him? Or the two of you are into the same sin. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Tell him or her, heaven is real. <laughs> if you miss heaven, <laughs> you will be in hell. Don't you know that I'm a Yoruba man? You are not, you are not expected to be afraid of the person that sent you on an errand. I mean, oh no, you are not expected to be afraid of the person you are sent an errand to. You discharge the errand the way you are being sent. The only person that you are permitted to be afraid of is the one who sent you. Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars eh? even liars you that will say holy lie that is nothing called holy lie white lie you know sometimes somebody call you severally and you are now saying you didn't see the call and you saw it eh? you, you know why some of you Adjusted your WhatsApp. Eh? Okay, you know. You know. Yes, I know you know. You know why you adjusted your WhatsApp now? So that they won't know that you have read it. Eh? So that by the time I, I even send you a message, I, I have not checked my WhatsApp in the last of the. Ah, bah, a dicky. And you are still going to carry. Hey. And the person you are lying to is coming to carry the communion, to take communion from you. You are not ashamed. He said, All liars. How many of the liars? Some of them, plenty of them, majority of them. And you are included if you are still lying. He says, have, have their part in the lake which burned with what? Fire and brimstone, which is the second 
death. Hey. You know my major concern. How can you suffer in this world and still go and suffer at the other side? Uh, even, even if you still enjoy like a basha in here or, or not, um, is that one is still okay. That you okay, you will compensate, you will use the enjoyment here to compensate for the suffering in hellfire, sir. But you never rode a car. Even to climb Okada, you borrow money. You live in a face me. I slap you. For 29 years, you didn't change. In fact, they are now calling you landlord. They now made you. <laughs> uh, you eventually be graduated to become a self-appointed caretaker. And even at that, your words are more harsher than that of the owner of the house to the tenant. Your husband cannot talk. Your mouth is like a razor blade. And the man is a very perfect gentleman. When you speak, you will go back to 1938. Just because that man did not have the opportunity to improve upon his degree. And then now you are, because you are doing your PhD, the man cannot rest. Your wife cannot talk. None of your children can dare talk to you because you have now been ordained in the church and you have now been given a position in the office as a permanent secretary. All the neighbors, they are in trouble around you. And then all your cars are mean winner. My year of distinction, heaven on earth. God placed you in that office to bring people to his kingdom. But you are the one that is stopping people from coming to his kingdom. Do you know that some people that knew you in the office, they came to this church and they saw you collecting offering. They say, ah, if this is Christianity, I've not gotten to my last bus stop. This man is here. This woman is here. That can cause the dead until the dead will rise up and fight back. Matthew 7, 22 to 23, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. Now, do you know that God can use anybody whenever it's his faith? He can use a drunk card to minister healing. And that the healing will work. Just because somebody's faith registers in heaven. And God will bypass all his standard and use the person as a vessel. And at the end of the day, how will you now make become an Aguero? You know Aguero, when you get to Felele Park. Is it Felele Park they call it? Uh, Felele, whichever one is just Lele anything. <laughs> they are not going anywhere, but they know the destination of all the buses and all the cars in the park. That's an agro. You are like a signboard pointing into the, to the kingdom of God, but you yourself, you are not going in there. God used you mightily to bring healing, to bring revival, and yet, by virtue of the things you do that is not even aware to your wife, that your wife is not even, did not know anything about it. The things that you are doing, 
secretly that your husband is not aware, that your children are not aware, that your parents are not aware, that your children don't know anything about. But you see, uh, uh, when you get to service of zone, you hear all manner of testimonies. <laughs> Nobody dares to say rubbish thing on the testimony ground. They will bond you out. Do you understand? But you see, no matter the good thing they say about anybody, that good thing they are saying cannot take anybody to heaven. No. No, not at all. Please understand with me. If you live a sanctified life, you are entitled to divine honor. Say divine honor. Divine. Say divine honor. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having this seed, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that names the name of the Lord depart from what? Iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, it shall be what? A vessel unto honor. Sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Second Timothy chapter, 9, chapter 2 and verse 19 to 21, that's what we have read. Pathway to sanctification. In the first side, we will look at it that, that the foundation for entering that pathway to sanctification is genuine salvation through genuine repentance. But we must crave for the endowment of the spirit of holiness. According to the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 4. And declare to be the son of God. With power. According to the spirit of holiness. Holiness is a spirit. And just like filthy lifestyle. Emanate from the filthy spirits. Am I following? Are you following me? Are we still together? So you and I need to cry and crave for endowment with the spirit of holiness. Hear me. No man can enjoy a sanctified life without a continuous fellowship with the saints. You want to enjoy a sanctified life that will usher you to honor that will usher you to supernatural breakthrough, that will make you to enjoy sound health and live long with a greater dimension of prosperity in this wicked world, sir. You need, and I need, to continually fellowship with the saints. Because when you come to church regularly, or the garden of God's people, sir, you are renewing your strength on a daily basis, sir. Because you will come to the realm of understanding. I was reading in the middle of the night, Psalm 73, how David nearly got black slitted just because he saw the ungodly prospering. He saw the ungodly becoming robust in the land. He saw the ungodly being put put in position of honor and authority in the land, and they are calling them distinguished senator. Honorable member of the National House of Representative, the Green Chamber, the Red Chamber, and yet there is no honor. Am I talking to somebody? No, tell me, how many of them are really distinguished? How many of them are truly honorable in that place? Because they are living in Abuja. Many of them cannot go back to their village. And so they don't bother the kind of life that people live. Do you know to travel from here to Ilori, there shouldn't be more than four hours in those days when the road were good you can't get there in eight hours it's a journey i've made by myself is somebody hearing me i've driven it 
Somebody have driven me on it, and I see just came back from that area last week. And yet you say we have distinguished senator. I met one in a, one of my son's birthday, Golden Jubilee birthday in Abuja, in one hotel that I was privileged to minister somehow there. And then he sat with me. And I said, sir, I know you came to our church. You need to come and see me. The way you are behaving, you can't get anything out of this life. Am I talking to you? The next time, if you see me, don't greet me. Am I talking to you? Please listen attentively, sir. But you see, God wants to reposition you. He wants to make you the next prime minister. He wants to make you the counselor. He wants to make you the honorable member of the Okogi State Assembly. He wants to make you the first lady tomorrow. He wants to make you the governor tomorrow. He wants to make you a senator tomorrow. When you get there, won't you be more dangerous than the people that we are talking about today? Because like I said in the first half, we have the ex-looters, current looters, and the awaiting looters. And awaiting looters, they are more terrible than the current. David said in verse 17, I will have gone back to the world until I appear in the sanctuary. Psalm 73, verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. That was the recovery of my destiny, sir. If not, I would have said, even going to church is a scam. I'm coming from somewhere. We now have a pastor that lobby, bribe their way to co co get transfer. And somebody was crying. Daddy just you must just help me. I say help you for what? Who did you know that helped me? I went through the from the village to town to city, go back to town, come to city to learn how to behave. When I get to a position, sir, nobody under heaven. I have never called anybody. Today, they transfer pastor to some station. They will send a ministry ahead to go and check the church. How does the office of the pastor look like? How, what is the income of the church? What is the attendance? How does the church building look like? Ha! But hear me. The snare is broken. Your soul has suddenly escaped. In this covenant day of escape, sir, your destiny will not be trapped. The destiny of your children will not be trapped. Your business will not be trapped. Your career will not be trapped. Now, whatsoever thing anybody must have spoken into the atmosphere that is working against the glory of the destiny that God ordained for you, sir. Today, in the name of Jesus the Christ, I speak to the atmosphere because it is written, Who is she that said it and it cometh to pass when the Lord God has not commanded it? Whatsoever thing that has been spoken against your family, against your fruitfulness, against your health, in any coven, from any coven, from any evil altar, or the marine kingdom, I neutralize them by the blood of Jesus Christ. I neutralize them by the blood of Jesus. You know why? You have a destiny. You have an heritage of divine escape in Christ Jesus. No matter the fabrication, whether under the sea they fabricated it. No matter the fabrication on the evil altar in any coven that is targeting you this year end, you and your family, you will escape. You and your children, you will escape. You and your parents, you will escape. You and your business, you will escape. You 
and your sibling, you will escape. Amen. You are not permitted to die before your time. Amen. You know why? Jesus died young for you to live long. I'm excited to let you know that. How can I die young? Except I kill myself by myself. How can I? When somebody chose to pay the price, he died young for me to live long. And I, as you partake of this communion, every death sentence that is buried in you in form of sickness, disease, affliction of any kind, as you partake of the mission of the Holy Communion today, all of such death, death sentence will be neutralized. Yeah. Your soul will escape. Yeah. You will not die the death of another man. Yeah. Your child will not die the death of another man. Yeah. Your wife will not die the death of another woman. Yeah. Your husband will not die the death of another man. Yeah. Your parent will not die the death of another parent. Yeah. If you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. So what are we saying in lesson? For you to escape, be born again, choose to follow the path of righteousness, choose to love God more than yourself. More than anything else. I told my wife when I was caught in her, I said, hear me, I love you. But I don't love you as much as I love God. Whatsoever thing that I've never been able to give to God, don't ask me. Only what I've been privileged to single-handedly give to God that you are qualified for. But she has changed cars too. Severally. Severally. Eh? She has ride better cars. And that's the truth. But because we've been able to give that one to God before. Am I talking to somebody? Loving God above yourself, above anyone else, Guarantee your divine escape in times of critical challenge. Did you hear the testimony that was read? That one that was carried, that was carried from CMS and then uh, slept off and he found himself in a jar. And they said, you are already gone. You better cooperate. I said, I'm not going to cooperate with you. And all of a sudden, it's the phone rang. And Leke Alabali Kata. Who is that speaking? My father. Who is your father? Bishop David Oedepo. Ah, we are sorry. Please take this money and go. It's not people like you that we are looking for. When you are relevant to God's equation and the advancement of his kingdom here on NASA, you, nothing, nothing, no fabrication of air can survive in your life or in your home, sir. You are blessed. Did you receive it today? Just lift up your two hands to heaven and bless God. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. He's worthy. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Because a new you is imagine. 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 God is turning your story around. 360 degree. In this wicked war, you will rise. You will travel abroad. You will go and come back severally. Yeah. All eyes bow and all eyes close. Every time I remember where God brought me from and where by his grace he has kept me and where he's still taking me to, I can't but advise people that are not yet born again. If I've ever become anything at all in your sight, it's not because I came from any background that is good. At least some of you went to my village and you saw how very wonderful the village was. Yes. So I am not the type that did not come out from a village because I know all of you are city people. You don't have a village, no problem. God brought me out of a background. And I knew when I was saying to, let you wait behind, you meet me in church in those days in Lagos. Trekking from Ikeja inside to our Raji Oba church. Just because I had the conviction. Just because I became fully persuaded that this path that I'm following is a path that will take me from nowhere to somewhere. That will make me to become an envy of my generation. I have two people that we gave our life to Christ that time. About that time, about the same time. One on the same day and then the other one 
about the same week. But today, none of them can stand where I'm privileged because they went back. Because they thought it was a very hard way to follow. I'm glad I'm here today. There are people here that are seated. The destiny of nations are tied to your loins. But for that destiny to come alive, you need to be born again. You need to be what? Born again. All less bad and all less close. You want to surrender your life to Jesus or rededicate your life back onto him wherever you are. Don't be ashamed of him. Jesus met me somewhere. He brought me out of where he met me and he brought me to this level and he's still taking me beyond. You want to surrender your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Christ by the reason of the message that you have heard. Lift up your right hand to heaven where you are seated. Just lift it up to Jesus. I want to pray for you very quickly. Don't be ashamed of him. If you are ashamed to come out today to identify with him in the open, he will be ashamed of you in the presence of the angels of God in the sight of his father. Lift up those hands to heaven and say this word of prayer after me. If you are lifting up, let it be up. Don't use time to put it on your head. Just let Jesus see that hand up. Yes, God bless those hands. And say this word of prayer after me. Lord Jesus, say after me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Save me and deliver me from the power of sin and that of the devil to serve the living God. Today, I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that you are my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I'm now born again. I'm a child of God. All things are passed away and all things have become new. Amen. You pray that prayer, carry your bag, your Bible, everything you came to church. We don't leave your phone behind because we are closing from here. Come to meet me on the altar here. I want to pray for you. Yes, come, my brother, come, my sister, come. My brother, come, my sister, come from that side. I saw some hand, just come. Do yourself a favor. Walk out on the devil for the first time. Don't allow the unit you belong to blindfold you. It is possible for one to be in a unit and go to hell. Don't allow the activity in the church to place effort over your life and your destiny. Just walk, walk out on the devil. The joy of thy salvation Every near right spirit within me Cast me all away Cast me all away From the presence I'm seeing eight people, three ladies, and five brothers that are supposed to be in front now. This is just your life. Why must you waste the destiny of those that are tied to your loins? God has a good plan for you. And he wants to take you out of where you are to where you are to be. If you love yourself now, come. And honor Jesus with this your very life. Three ladies, five brothers, come now from wherever you are. You are the light that your, your, your family are waiting for. You are the light that will put off the darkness that is harassing members of your lineage. Why must you put them? Why must you cooperate with the enemies of your destiny? To sit over them. Wherever you are, come. Come. Pass me no Ladies, when it is caught today, when it is the of God, don't hide in your heart. Don't hide in your heart. Come now. Come now. Come now. now. Come now. It is close already. Those of you that just came out, can you leave? Say after me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. 
I come to you today. Save me and deliver me from the power of sin and that of the devil to serve the living God. Today I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that you are my Lord and my personal Savior. Amen. I decree the hand of God to rest upon you. Every evil hand monitoring you, that hand is cut off from your life. The evil mark that is placed over your forehead, that is making you to miss the best of God, that is making you to experience near success syndrome, that evil mark is removed from your life. In Jesus' mighty name.